Not only do I currently have the pleasure of working with this year's honoree, I also happen to be one of his biggest fans. As you know, the Cecil, the Cecil B. DeMille Award is given for outstanding lifetime achievement, and what this actor has achieved could easily fill a dozen lifetimes. Born in Scotland, he started acting more than 45 years ago, playing roles in British theater, films, and television. In 1958, in a three-handkerchief drama starring Lana Turner, the world was formally introduced to a handsome, young, charming Scott by the name of Sean Connery. Oh, Mark, never let me go. I love you more than I've ever loved anything in my life. Tell me again. You're a greedy woman, Sarah. Oh, yes. Beauty, and it's gathered all together. Sean was chosen next by Walt Disney to sing for his stew in a delightful bit of Irish fantasy, Darby O'Gill and the Little People. She is my dear, my darling one, her eyes so sparkling, full of fun. No other, no other can match the likes of her. She is my dear, my darling one, my smiling and big island one. I love the ground she walks upon, my darling Irish girl. In 1962, he got a license to kill as Ian Fleming's ultra-smooth British spy 007, the man who's known the world over as... Bond. James Bond. Shocking. He certainly left with his tails between his legs. Darling, money, Penny. You know I never even looked at another woman. Really, Jay? Mm -hmm. What are you doing here? Looking for Shell? No, I'm just looking. Stay where you are. I promise I won't steal your shells. I promise you, you won't either. Hello. Aren't you in the wrong room, Mr. Bond? Not from where I'm standing. Since you're here, would you mind giving me something to put on? Actually, I'm a spy. I don't know that. The movies made Sean Connery an international superstar. He played Bond seven times. The new Bond, Pierce Brosnan, recently said it best for all of us. Sean Connery is the man. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome another great fan of Sean's, his good friend, Golden Globe nominee, John Travolta. Sean was a sensation as Bond. Not only did the fans recognize his talent, but Hollywood's best directors wanted him for their next films. From Hitchcock to Houston, from Lamette to Spielberg, he was in demand. Is that all you've got to say? Sidney Lumet chose Sean as a rebellious inmate who was about to face the torture of the hill. See that hill? I noticed it as I came in. We built it special. A few tons of sand and rock and a lot of labor and sweat. The prisoners built it. Well, that's marvelous. So it's a great construction feat. Something tells me you're going to get in very well. I don't want any special privileges. It's hot on that hill. Hot. I found you just saw snow on the top when I came in. Dead set on having a go at it, aren't you? Oh, I can do without it, sir, but I think you've got other plans for me. You call me 
his son. John Michael. Houston's the man who would be king. John tries to convince Michael Caine, as well as himself, that he is a native god. The bridge we're building, it's only the first of many. They'll tie the country together. A nation, I shall make of it with an anthem and a flag. And I shall treat on equal terms with the Viceroy and other kings and princes. And when I've accomplished what I set out to do, I'll stand one day before the Queen. Not kneel, mind you, but stand like an equal. And she'll say, I'd like you to accept the Order of the Garter as a mark of my esteem, cousin. And she'll pin it on me herself. It's big. I tell you, it's big. And I tell you, you need a physic. In 1979, Sean starred as the cunning mastermind behind the great train robbery. Ladies and gentlemen, the director of that film, Michael Crichton. One of the things I admire about Sean Connery is his independence of thought. While we were shooting the great train robbery, we spent many days on top of a moving 1853 train that always went 35 miles an hour because anything faster than that was dangerous. During helicopter shots, Sean had to be up on top alone. After one shot, he came down and said, that train was going much faster than 35. Everyone, including the engineers, assured him the train was only going 35 miles an hour. Sean listened for a while, and then he asked a question nobody had ever thought of. He said, an 1853 train has no speedometer. How do you know how fast it was going? <laughs> They said, oh, because we count telephone poles. So we radioed the helicopter to ask the speed, and the pilot said, you were going 55 miles an hour, and we thought Mr. Connery was crazy to be up there. <laughs> Sean said, see? And then he went right back up to do it again for several more days. But I'll never forget that group of people standing around assuring Sean that he was wrong. And all the time, he was right. John has given us more than 40 years of memorable films and great performances. Well, Sean, we are all looking forward to at least 40 more. On behalf of the Board of Directors of the Hollywood Foreign Press Association and its president, Aida Takla O'Reilly, we proudly present the Cecil B. DeMille Award to you, Sean Connery. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, members of the Hollywood Foreign Press Association, and thank you, fellow workers, and you, Buck. It's a special honor receiving this award from Michael. You know, multi-talented is a much-abused term in our profession, but Michael is the only man I know who can write a best-selling novel with one hand while taking out your appendix for the other. <laughs> I grew up, like uh, many of you, watching the films of Cecil B. DeMille, in whose name this award is given. And he was one of those who knew the secrets of successful filmmaking. He understood the audience's natural attraction to themes with great moral issues, messages, and with a lot of sex and violence. And 
Uh, as a great producer, he understood that uh, biblical stories are all in public domain. Uh, <laughs> I, I've, I've made a lot of films, some of which I've forgotten and some of which I've tried to forget. But in the course of this uh, strange thing we call a career, I've traveled to scores of exotic places. I've met many interesting people, kissed dozens of beautiful women, and I've actually been very well paid for it, and I am most grateful. But of course, that doesn't mean that I won't sue you. <laughs> uh, a number of decades ago, when I started in this business, I was told by someone who seemed to know what he was talking about that I should take lessons to erase permanently my accent so that I could play parts without wearing a kilt. <laughs> and so that the American audiences could understand what the hell I was saying. Well, it's quite obvious by now that I didn't take his advice. As a matter of fact, just in the last year, there were two big films made of Scottish heroes. Rob Roy, played by an Irishman, and the other, Braveheart, played by an American Australian. And both splendidly Scottish. The point is, I think, if actors and actresses are good at what they do, and if you, the audience, are affected, moved by the stories we help to tell, then that's the real reward. Truthfully, it's the stuff in between the punches, the shootings, and the car crashes that really count. The scenes between the men and the women that try to say something about how we really behave, how we really feel, that's ultimately what moves people and sends them to the theaters, to pays to see our films. In other words, I prefer my audiences stirred, not shaken. Uh, I, th <laughs> thank you again for this. I promise to do everything I can to deserve it except retire. Thank you. Good night.